This is very similar of my house where I was live in uh, Syria in the mountain and the view very nice uh, around uh, us there is the mountains and the end there is a sea beautiful view it was <laughs> and this is the road before I reach my house this is the road the main road beautiful way nice uh, place and this is the lake Sadbaluran we call it just also before to reach my home this is the sea this is uh, like resorts five stars hotel always in summertime it's full yeah some places in latakia Everything gone. I have so many things like pictures, books. We leave behind uh, everything. I mean everything. When I I lost my mother, I feel I lost everything in my life. You want a safe place, but safe place to cost you everything وعيش بعدك حياتي جفا مواسم في دما في ربيع Uh, a bomb came to my uh, nephew's uh, and um, my niece's uh, school. Mm -hmm. They were like in the, the morning assembly, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, a bomb came on the, the school and 60 children were caught their hands and legs. 48 children died. This is one of the, the bloody days they, they experienced. Mm -hmm. so, what about these children? What's the, re the relation between them and Bashar? Mm. So it's, it's a game, I think. But you, we have no clue when, when this will be ended. Mm. No. Who doesn't want safety? It was a century ago, but I recognize your face.
I fled from Eritrea to Sudan. We were in Karas in the Libyan Sahara. They are traveling on the sand bus. The speed is very high. So the drivers were taking hashish, something like that. They were drinking a lot. The people just thrown up from the cars. Two people died, but six people broke their legs. So many accidents in the way. Can you tell me about the Belgian refugee when they got Britain? People were just trying to flee as quickly as they could and so people were leaving on little fishing boats and then the British government sent over some boats as well. In Scotland, Belgian refugees were met off the train by pipers. Crowds arrived to cheer them, sometimes waiting hours for the trains to come, marching in procession to welcome them. They were called the plucky Belgians, the brave Belgians. It is different now. Safety causes everything. I spent uh, 38 days, one month and eight days in jungle in France. But when I reached the car, it's car, unbelievable. This calm in France, this is a calm between, in, uh, on the border between UK and France, like that. Even the animal it can't live there. Wales. Between Wales and there. Between two hills. Very, very dangerous. Very, very, very dangerous. France got okay, no way. No sleep, no eat, no good. We have photos of you arriving in big family groups. It is different now. The journey here is so hard. We arrived alone. Right here, they came to pick you up, sending ferries, fishing boats, whatever they could get to rescue you. Was their welcome different then? What's changed? Do they rescue us now? Sometimes uh, I, I, I touch the wall of oh, I am in UK, thanks God. <laughs> because you, you just most of the time I, when I dream, I dream it in that place, in Sahara or in the sea. So uh, oh, I can't trust myself when I, I, I find my, myself in the bed. So <laughs> this terrified journey, yeah. It's said 
they put you into houses immediately. Families all over Scotland took you into their homes. Big houses for the wealthy. Modest houses for the poor. Oh, this was... Well, these walls, you know, uh, they saw our tears and they heard our laughter. Thank you for all the memories. You were our home when we didn't have any. So thank you for giving us a place to live. Thank you very much. Thank you for all the memories. Jad, the naughtiest boy ever. The first day, he, uh, Jad, uh, my youngest child, went to school. He wore this T-shirt. Mm -hmm. He wa He felt so isolated. He felt so uh, uh, weird feeling. The last day, they told him the school uh, wear like a uh, a, a T-shirt and bring it with you and let you. Ch friends to sign it, so he brought this because it was the first day he's, I'm going to take it with me. I'm going to take my memory. Ah, oh, yes. But I'm not going to wash it. <laughs> The first um, stay in Govan, and I was I thought that um, living alone here, mm. they are the neighbors is very quiet. Mm. And I think there is no one with me here. And every day I'm I speak to myself. You should go out. You should go out. Why are you still, why are you still stay at home? I I bought a bicycle. The weather is very lovely. It was very lovely at that time, and, and August and September was very good. It was lovely, and I took a wrong way in emergency way in tunnel, <laughs> Clyde tunnel. It's I ride, I ride, yeah, I rode my, my bike there and the police, I found police wait for me <laughs> outside. He told me it's just for, for emergency vehicles and for firefighters. <laughs> Refugees were registered on their arrival in a single page form. In addition to that, an alien's identity card was introduced. If uh, you are an asylum seeker, you can't work until you get your, your papers. I prefer to work, to start my, my work and to, to feel relaxed. Just I'm hard working, I could say I'm hard work. I, I never want to, to stay at home the whole days. It damages your brains. At that time, Hundred years ago, they put you straight into work. Sometimes in factories, or sometimes to make bombs to kill our common enemy, the Germans. Or as clippies on trams and buses. No wonder you looked so proud. first interview that we do to declare ourselves as, as an asylum seeker to the Home Office, the, so the one that is one done in Croydon, Croydon. yeah, uh, basic information of when you moved to England, when you uh, entered the country, mm. uh, how did you get in, you know, when was the last time you got out. Then you, we do the main interview, which um, is a much longer interview, it takes mm. about four hours, and um, then it, this is much more detailed. There are 147 questions in the interview, mm -hmm. taking almost four hours with like a 15 minute break. Mm -hmm. um, and um, the hardest paper that we received was this, the refusal letters that we got, which was this one, I think this one's yours. It's just lines and lines and pages of uh, 
140 reasons why uh, you're a failure in a way, like 140 reasons why you cannot stay. And it's a very hard letter to read. It's, it's one of the yeah. hardest things to go through. Um, and that we had to prepare for the whole process of appealing the decision. Mm. We need to be really patient mm. with these things, especially because they are all things that are out of your control. Mm. We moved three times in Glasgow so far. And we moved, I think, two times in Manchester. And then we have like ten addresses for like this two years. You may have like a, a place, to, a place live to live and sleep and eat, but you don't consider it to be your own Home. It's not your own as as well. It's yeah. uh, you don't you don't have any rights to it in a way. So the most the most important thing I suppose is the fact that you can't settle down in it. You can't always feel like okay, this is it. You start to make some kind of uh, a feeling, a feeling of a home by being together and us, by making some friends here. It feels like a bit as a home, right? <laughs> to be honest, I don't feel like it's home, my home, because I just go home and nobody is there. Just go to sleep. Mm. Then can you say that this is a home? If it's home, then there must be some people that you feel like. There is someone who look after you or who cares about you. But here, if you go to your home and you're alone, then who cares about you? So it doesn't feel like home. Home is wherever you find friends and you feel included. But whereas if you find a big building and a very nice house, but yet you don't have love, then it's not home. A building is house, not home. It takes time to, to get someone who really cares about you. That's me. They are my niece and nephews and neighbors. This is my car. Cow. Cow. This is my brother at my supermarket. A pasta, tomato paste, eggs, yogurt, chicken, lamb, beef. Uh, to live out of your car church is quite a difficult one. Uh, our body is here, but our soul is with our parents and families. So, yes, we are living 50%. If we lost our way of uh, coffee making, uh, I think t we lost uh, a great culture or a big thing. It's not easy <laughs> because you have a uh, process. If you have a new visitor uh, in our tradition, you have to roast in front of him. Yeah, because they love the, the smoke of this one. The day after war broke out, an Aliens Restriction Act was passed. Foreigners of any type couldn't go within 10 miles of the coast. Spy fever gripped the nation. They were scared you would become spies and send secret messages to the Germans. They even forbid you from riding bicycles in case you carry British secret to a network of spies. It 
to go anywhere to any appointment especially with the home office uh, we have to be on time the bike it's helped me a lot I start on the river the Clyde River it was a sunny day the people walking others cycling them smiling uh, I had a very hard situation and I cannot maybe smile in easily but when I bike I feel better, much better. I feel uh, uh, more love for Glasgow because I saw it bigger and bigger. Before I don't only I know city center and my house. I saw Glasgow big and beautiful. I feel free. We went to London for Christmas, and uh, after a few days, we were like, "Oh, we really miss Glasgow." It's, it's, it's been it's been a few days, and you know, we miss the familiar streets. We miss we miss the with, accent. You know, the accent, yeah. <laughs> I think that's one of the important parts. When you start to miss a place, it's it's probably you know a part of your home. Yeah, yeah. you feel like that. Yes. I, I didn't expect the people is friendly like the, this. The, I, I didn't expect that. I think I'm lucky because I find the least for forget. I find family, really. Because oh, you've been like my, my family. I'm in our culture. If you know someone, you should keep him forever. This <laughs> country. Everything, uh, the culture, everything different. My son, everything. Now it's better. Now it's better. Maybe if you ask me two months ago or three months ago, I would say yes, I'm definitely going to Syria. But nowadays, no. You know, kids are more flexible and more adaptable than adults. When, when I, I was weak, they were my strength. They strengthened me a lot, yes. I used to, they used to empower me, and I used to empower them. So. Left, yes, just go back, yes. I'm helping, see, I'm helping. I feel strong with them. I can't, I can't live on my own. They are my strength point, and they are at the same time my weakness point. <laughs> I want uh, to save their lives, so, yes, and I was successful, <laughs> and happy, I'm happy, yeah. <laughs>